All right, we're ready to begin with Arkansas. Uh, we'll ask Coach Musselman for some general thoughts on the game. Then we'll take questions just for the two student athletes and then excuse them uh, back to the locker room and finish up with Coach. So, Coach, would you begin? Yeah, just a tale of two halves. I thought uh, first half offensively, defensively, we did uh, not play up to the way that we've played over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, halftime was good for us. I thought the team regrouped. Um, and then I thought, you know, second half was 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 exact opposite of what we saw uh, in the first half. Much better offense, much better uh, defense. Uh, played with more intensity. Um, give uh, Vandy credit uh, for that, you know, comeback under under a minute and a half to go. And and uh, then I thought that our guys closed the game the proper way. Played fairly good defense in the in the last five minutes and certainly scored enough points to uh, to win the game. And um, Give our guys a lot of credit for regrouping after after halftime and the way that we played the first 20 minutes of the game. Okay, let's take questions uh, just for the two student athletes. And if you'd raise your hand, we'll get one of the remote mics to you. And please direct your question to a specific player. Let's start right on the left in the front here. You want me to ID myself? I mean, I don't care. Uh, this for for both both guys. Uh, KV really took over in, in uh, overtime. Got seven. Um, what would you think of how he played, especially in the overtime? Maybe Tremont could take that and then Trevin. He played great. He did what he does. Uh, he got to the rack. He played aggressive. Got to the free throw line and made plays. And it was good for us down the stretch. Uh, he just did what we needed him to do. Um, we know he can get downhill, and he's great at drawing free throw attempts. So, you know, him doing that in overtime really helped us. All right, questions? Raise your hand, and we'll get one of the remote pikes to you. Okay, let's go back to Bob down the front. Eric alluded to the second half. You guys were down by 15. I don't know, about 16 minutes left. Dug a pretty big hole. Um, you, you dug a big hole in Fayetteville, but came back out within one. I mean, how's it, how good does it feel to finish off the, uh, you know, the comeback this time? And then the overtime, they seemed to have the momentum, but, but you guys took over. What, what, was the key to, what was the key to the comeback and then, and then regrouping in overtime? Question was for who? Uh, how about both, both of them? Who first? How about Trevon? Let's do Trevon first. Uh, it, it was good for us, you know, just just us coming back, playing hard. I think that's what started us off, just playing hard, us being connected on, on, on defense and offense. It was, it was good for us, and it was able to let us survive another day. <clears throat> Obviously, we didn't play, uh, you know, up to our standards in the first half, so, you know, to be able to regroup uh, and survive, nobody wanted to go home, so uh, it was a good turnout. All right, other questions? Let's go to the back on the right. For Tremont's 18-second uh, half points, what's the key to getting you in an offensive groove like that, like what you had in that second second half? Uh, I just went out and said, I'm going to leave it all out on the floor. And it worked for my favor coming out in that second half, 18-second half points. And my teammates was with me. Everybody was on. Everybody was rolling the second half, and that was good for us. Other questions? Raise your hand. All right, let's go back to the front on the left. I guess for both y'all, you know, it's a tough, tall ask to win five in five days. You can't win five till you win one. Just how do you feel about surviving and then, you know, you get, get to play again tomorrow? I mean, Tremont, maybe you could take that and then Trevin. I had another one if that's okay. I don't want to, I don't want to wear her out. You know? There you go. So. It just feels good to be able to play another game with the guys, you know, just going back to the hotel, watching film. We're going to do a walkthrough. Just all those little things that, that make a great team. So I'm just happy we get to do that again. Uh, what was the question? Just, I mean, you, you got to win five here, right, to, to get to the big dance. But you can't win five till you win one. Just how good does it feel to survive an overtime game, and, and then you know you can move on, obviously. Uh, you know, coming in, it was a, it was a theme all week that you know we were, we were breaking it down and saying five, you know, for five games. But uh, you know, when we got here, we started breaking it down with one, you know. Uh, so just taking it one game at a time, and and tonight was a a, a good start. Okay. We got time for one more question. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Um, you guys got to play South Carolina tomorrow. Obviously, uh, you know it's a pet shop for payback, but you, you got extended tonight. Very tough game overtime. Just how do you feel about tomorrow and getting another shot at South Carolina, maybe Tremont and then Trevin? Well, it feels good. We get to get a redemption game against them, and we're gonna come out. I feel like we're gonna come out way better than we did tomorrow in that first half and second half. So it's it's gonna be a game tomorrow for sure. Uh, he pretty much answered. Okay, we'll excuse the players. You can return to the locker room. Go 
and we'll continue on with uh, questions. For Coach, if you'll raise your hand, and we'll get one of the remote mics to you. Let's start on the left on the aisle. Coach, there are a lot of examples of a team surviving in a game like that and picking up momentum. There are a lot of people that think your team is talented enough to make a deep run in this tournament. Talk about the mindset and what winning a game like that can do for the future of the tournament. Well, I think, uh, you know, one, when you're, when you're playing like we did in the first half, it's, it's hard to turn the thing around. Um, but I thought we played a great second half. We changed up our defense. We started trapping um, what we call our hits. We have not really done it this year because we, uh, we haven't been very good at it, quite frankly. And, and uh, our past teams have done it and, uh, and done it really, really well. Um, I thought that that disrupted um, Vanderbilt in a major way. Um, you know, we just picked the player that we wanted to, uh, to leave and, and try to force an open man to, to make a play. Um, and, I, you know, our, our game plan coming in was we didn't want Lawrence to, to go off and have a big game. I thought our team did a really good job on, on his, especially keeping him off the foul line. He had 14 free throws attempted in Bud Walton. And, uh, you know, tonight three free throws attempted. And, and uh, you know, we know that Manyan went off had a great game, um, but again, we, we felt like that wing score uh, was something that we could ill afford tonight, and I thought we did a, a really good job of help defense um, on number zero, Lawrence. Any other questions? Raise your hand. Let's go to the back on the left. Eric, when it got to overtime, was it get it out of Manyon's hands? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, uh, even to start the second half, I mean, we, we pressed a couple possessions because I just thought we were we lacked juice. Um, and I thought maybe by pressing it, it might ignite us a little bit. That's what happened when we played them um, in Bud Walton. We, we, we uh, you know, Vanderbilt executes their offense really well, and, and uh, tempo can be, a, can be something that you're concerned with. And, and um, I just thought we played with, with a lot more competitive spirit the last 20 minutes and certainly in overtime. Um, you know, we wanted to, to try to make somebody else beat us. Um, so. All right, question down the front, right in the middle. Yeah, Eric, you got, uh, uh, Battle had seven points in overtime, we really got downhill. What do you think of his performance in, in overtime and how big that was for you all? Yeah, he was phenomenal. I mean, we wanted to go to him. Um, you know, we've gone to him the last couple of weeks when we need a basket. Um, and, I, you know, we put the ball in T-Mark's hands, too, at certain stretches. And I thought uh, Kai Mitchell was phenomenal in, in middle pick and roll and, and, um, and rolling to the rim and rolling behind uh, their five man. Um, so I thought, again, offensively, you know, when, when, you, when you think about the way we played um, offensively in the second half, it was, it was the pace we wanted. And, and uh, you know, we made some threes. But I thought in the first half they kept that lane pretty compact and didn't allow us to – you know, get as many free throws attempted as we want. Didn't allow us, uh, you know, to get to get dribble drives. And, and um, you know, I think teams that do that over 40 minutes of late, we've proven that we, um, you know, that we can we can make enough threes. Nine threes tonight is is a really good number for us. Okay, I think was there a question on the far right? There you go. Go ahead. Eric, you alluded to the uh, the defense in the second half and extending that pressure and making a team that kind of slows it down have to uh, speed up a little bit. You're playing a team tomorrow that plays the slowest pace in the conferences. How, how does that defense, whenever you guys extend it past half court, do its job of getting the other team to be able to play in a pace that they're maybe not comfortable with? Yeah, I mean, I just think that you know you have some decisions to make on what type of pressure, what type of press you want to do, and. Um, you know, we haven't done it much this year. So, um, you know, how the game unfolds tomorrow, I, I, I really don't know. Obviously, none of us know. Um, we, we had guys play extended minutes, obviously. Um, so we'll dive into the film tonight and, and um, you know, see what – we don't have a long time to, to pre, you know, to do a prep. Obviously, we won't have a shoot around tomorrow, and, and they will not be on their legs in the gym anywhere to walk through anything. So it's going to have to be a really solid walk through in a, in a ballroom, um, much like you know an NBA team might do on back-to-back -back nights. So um, you know we have to get ready. We've we've done a good job preparing for teams when we play them a second time or a third time, and 
you know, hopefully, you know, we come up with something slightly different than what happened at Bud Walton, because if we do what we did in Bud Walton, we will not win the game. Pretty simple. Okay, let's go question on the left, and then we'll come to the center. Eric, given the offensive might in this conference from team after team, how hard is it just to win a game in this conference? What, what goes into that? Yeah, this conference is unbelievable. Um, it really is. Um, the, the, the new players that have come into this league, whether they be you know freshmen from Kentucky, whether it be Hubbard um, at Mississippi State, um, whether it's transfers that have come into the league like Connect, um, Auburn, Small. For, there's a lot of there's a lot of new players in this league that um, you know that have that have surpassed some guys that are returners. Quite frankly, so that to me shows you um, how much this league has improved across the board. The coaching in this league is is off the charts. I mean, it's it's there's better coaches in this league than anywhere in the country. There's more talent. There'll be more NBA draft picks. There's been more NBA draft picks. Uh, really hard to win in this league if you don't have pros. Um, so it's, you know, it, I know it's a football conference, but it's also a freaking basketball conference, I can tell you that, and baseball. You know, I'll keep going, gymnastics, where else, you know. But basketball's right up there with football and everybody else as far as where we rank um, nationally. Okay, let's go to the center, the front. Eric, you probably don't think about stuff like this, but you know, 2020, you, you beat Vanderbilt on Wednesday. Now you're getting ready to play South Carolina. COVID cancels that. It seems like about 100 years ago to me. Our athletic director, Hunter, he reminded me of that before the game. Uh, I just wonder what your thoughts. I mean, this time, I assume, barring something crazy, you're going to play South Carolina tomorrow. Just well, what do you remember about that and, and the fact that you get, get to move on and, and what's your thoughts on the rematch? Yeah, I mean, two, you know, two different situations. I know that uh, you're speaking of the COVID when it was shut down, and, and uh, you know, that was our first year at Arkansas. And, Awesome team to coach. You know, I didn't recruit really many of those guys. Uh, having to tell them that we weren't going to play after winning game one. Uh, that team thought that they were a couple wins away from making an NCAA tournament. And uh, the thing gets shut down, and that's probably as hardest thing as I've ever had to do with a group of young men that I had really only been around for eight months. Uh, the whole room was new to one another, and they had fought and scrapped and became a much better team as the season progressed. We were undersized. We had a six-foot-six six center. Um, that team, like, you know, if I had to label them, they were heart and hustle, man. They, they, nobody wanted to play them. We got out-rebounded every night but led the nation in, in uh, defending the three because that was our only way of survival. And now this is a you know, completely different situation, different coaching staff at South Carolina, different personnel for both teams. We're just happy that we're still playing. Um, again, at, at halftime, I don't know if – Many Razorback fans thought we were going to still be playing, but here we are, and now we got a short turnaround. We got to get ready for South Carolina, which is uh, a, a top team in the country, a, a, a well-coached team, and a, and a team that's got great talent. Okay, we're going to call it right there, Coach. That's thank perfect. you. Thanks.